So we know what final means. You can set it once, right? And you can't set it again. Um, and now we're gonna find out what static kind of means. And I think you already kind of know from that first video. If I have a ball factory, right? And I create my three balls or four balls or infinite balls, right? I can keep on creating them. Um, and we, this pen has seen better days, right? And I have, you know, position X and position Y and velocity X and velocity Y, right? And each one has their own. Velocity X, velocity Y, and see position X, position Y, velocity X and velocity Y. All right, each one has their own, okay? What ends up happening uh, is you can create a static variable, like num balls, all right? So static int num balls. Static int num balls equals zero, okay? That belongs to the ball class itself. So this belongs to the ball class itself, all right? It doesn't belong to an instance. It belongs to the ball class itself. It has the same value for every instance of this, okay? Um, and this is the number of balls in existence. So in the constructor for ball, what we might do is we might increment this. And so when A is created, num balls will equal one. When B is created, num balls will equal two. And when C is created, num balls will equal three. It's like all of these instances share the same value. Okay, and any, at any time we can figure out how many balls are in existence, including when no balls are in existence by saying ball.numballs, okay? And since this is a, uh, a variable we can get with just the name of the class, we will make it public, okay? It'll always be public. Um, because we can get it with just the name of the class, okay? Um, so now we can mess around with it. Uh, let's see, all right. So right now we have a public stat, okay, a, a, a big asterisk here, and that is you have to change the name of your class to a .java file. So you just come up here and you can go rename and rename it to ball.java. Um, and the reason is because when it's a PDE, though it works basically like a Java file, uh, it's actually an inner class. And we'll talk about inner classes when we get more into the data structures portion of the class, okay? Um, and so since it's an inner class, uh, to make it a non-inner class, you'll say ball.java. It'll still work like normal. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. So it's not a PDE file anymore, it's a ball.java. But my main file is still a PDE file, right? That has uh, set up and draw and all of those, okay? Um, so in here now, we could say public static int num balls, all right? And I'm gonna set that equal to zero, okay? And then I can say something like num balls plus plus, okay? Or num balls equals num balls plus one, right? Same thing. Um, and then in lecture three, right, we're gonna have the constructor invoked over here, okay? And if I system.out.println at the end of setup, dot out dot print line uh, num balls in existence, and then I go plus um, ball dot. It's not going to suggest it. Wow. Wow. Uh, Yours, it'll suggest it. On mine, it's, I don't know what's going on. Is it still running? Is that maybe an issue here? Uh, let's see, let's see if it, or maybe it doesn't suggest it because I changed it to Java, and so now it doesn't, it doesn't give us the uh, suggestions. But it's all right, whatever. Um, a num balls, and let's hit play and see if this thing screams at us. Um, it does not, and it says num balls in existence is one, all right? So it invoked the constructor, 
And in the constructor, numballs got set to one, so numballs in existence is one. Now, let's say we decide to do the same thing with ball two, right? Um, and so before, I'm also gonna make ball two, and I'll just make it the same thing, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I just wanna show you that numballs changes, right? So ball two, and now balls.numball equals two in existence. Okay, so it worked. Um, you can also, you should be able to actually say like my ball, or was it my ball one? My, my ball one dot numballs, my ball one dot numballs, all right? And it should be the same value as ball dot numballs. Um, and yep, number of balls in existence is two. So it's like numballs is shared by ball one, ball two, right? And it can be invoked by the class itself. So even if these instances aren't created, there's still a value for numballs, okay? Now, Let's go into one last thing here, um, and that is a lot of you from the very beginning saw, you know, public static void main, right? You know what void is, you know what public is, right? But static, why is a method static? Well, a method is static when you don't need instances, it's not invoked on instances, it's invoked from the class name itself, all right? So we could have ball as our class, okay, and we could have numballs as our static int, right? And that equals zero, and we can grab numballs whenever we want. There's no instances in the world, right? Um, and we could also have a, uh, a function, let's say we had a method called uh, numballs times two, I know, it's a stupid method, but let's just say we have public method numballs times two times two, okay? And what this amazing method does is it just returns, it's an int, right? And it just returns numballs times two, right? Numballs times two, okay? Now, uh, what you're going to do here is you have this numballs times two, and you can uh, invoke this even without having an instance, which makes sense because numballs is in existence even without having an instance, right? Numballs actually is equal to zero, so numballs times two should give you zero, all right? So if you want to do that, what you need to do is you have to make this method static, okay? public static int numballs. And then you can say ball dot int numballs, okay? And it belongs to the class itself times two, whatever, right? And it belongs to the class itself, just like the variable belongs to the class itself, right? The static variable does. So static main, so public static, public static void main means that this function can be invoked even if there isn't an instance of the main class. Like you didn't call new to create an instance of the main class, which you never do and never should do, right? Uh, so you have the main class, okay, and then in here, there's, so main is a class, right? And then inside there's public static void main. And the static is telling you, okay, that can just be invoked on main class. You do not have to, or invoke from the class itself. You do not have to have an instance, which we wouldn't do for the main class anyways, right? We would, uh, and the fact that it's main also is special in Java because it means it's the entry point for the program. Okay, so static means I can invoke this function without an instance. All right, uh, we could show an example of that, I suppose. Uh, we could make, uh, so wait, we're gonna make public static int num balls times two. We could also just make like a, a, a getter for it, 
and a setter for it. I, I don't know why I'm doing this. Oh, but you could also just, but you could set those directly. So this is a little mathy thing, I guess. Um, and we could return num balls time, num balls times two. All right. And now we can actually invoke it from, uh, and I'm just gonna go back to calling this ball, right? And we're actually gonna invoke it from ball itself. Um, num balls time in existence times two. Okay, and we can say ball num balls times two. Okay, and that should return an integer num balls times two, and it should work. All right, and so if we uh hit play, it says number of balls in existence is two. Num balls in existence times two is four. All right, and so it did the did the right thing okay and if we had nothing in existence it would still work right we're not we don't have anything in existence and we hit play and we kind of get the same deal all right so you kind of know what static is you know what final is all right and the final video the final video on this little jog will be uh final statics we'll talk about that which you can probably guess what it is uh by putting the pieces of this together